31st December, the elected government of Ghana is toppled in a coup d'etat. Radios and televisions crackle on through the morning of January 1st. This is the second coming of Junior Jesus. The 34-year-old former fighter pilot, Flight Lieutenant J.J. Rawlings, is back. Those who forget their own history are in danger of repeating mistakes of the past. 36 years on, and the few who still remember or appreciate what went on, many who choose to forget, and relentless attempts to rewrite the history. Though faded, evidence is still visible like grainy, scratchy footage and old printed newspaper. To understand what really happened on New Year's Eve 1981 and why such a disruptive event is still so relevant today, we must go back to two years earlier to those fateful three months following June 4th, 1979, and how young patriots in tune with the pulse of the Ghanaian populace steered the nation away from total anarchy and societal collapse. Following the ousting of General Ekufu's SMC, another case study in a leadership out of touch with its own people. June 4, 79. The explosion. After so long unable to express their anger and hate towards their corrupt leadership, a widening gap between the elite and everyone else, senior generals versus the lower ranks, the revolution is spontaneous, violent. Jerry John Rawlings is sprung from his condemned cell at the Bureau of National Investigation, BNI, where he's been held for an attempted mutiny a month earlier. Without previous planning, it is clear to everyone that such a bold, defiant personality needs to lead a revolution of such magnitude. After a heated day of combat, the battle is won. Rawlings forms the Armed Force Revolutionary Council, the AFRC, and for three months, the young flight lieutenant does his best to contain the violent national outrage at symbols of leadership and elitism, and to stabilize the country in preparation for the slated constitutional elections. JJ understands that confident leadership founded on probity and accountability does not just tolerate a defiant, emboldened Ghanaian public but as such a Ghanaian is the only true hope for a nation of free people. This is not a philosophy shared by previous governments who, oblivious to the past of their people, had left corruption unchecked and suppressed through brutalization, coercion and pacification, any form of public outrage only to ensure that such a violent event as June 4th would be inevitable. Even in the months and years following the revolution, the political elite of Ghana still don't seem to comprehend the upheaval that threatened their very existence. Elections are organized, and the AFRC hand power back to the elected government, PMP and Dr. Hela Lima. By December 31st, 1981, the big men are throwing lavish annual parties. Oblivious to a resurgent resentment against the state of affairs, and a policy that looks exactly like business as usual. Charges have been returning seized properties to their corrupt owners, releasing businessmen and officials jailed during the revolution. While the unelected AFRC welcomed dialogue with the aggrieved public, the elected PMP leadership have re-established the master-silent follower relationship that was handed down from their colonial masters and maintained in previous Ghanaian administrations. After June 4, a nation of free Ghanaians faced with such disregard would have two options, to be subdued and emasculated by their compliance, or to cast off the shackles without hesitation. For the former revolutionaries such as J.J. Rawlings, enough is enough. On 31st December 1981, Liman's government is removed in a coup. Rawlings declares a holy war against negligence of leadership the people's revolution shall continue. No other government in the history of Ghana, before or since, was so engaged in reinvigorating the battered Ghanaian spirit by active, selfless leadership by example, actively cultivating a sense of boldness and defiance in its own subjects, transparency and willingness to harshly punish its own government officials when they fail to live up to property and accountability. No government prior to or since the PNDC have reversed the spread of parasitic urbanization in order to develop the more productive rural areas. And for this, no other leadership was so maligned and hated by the intellectual elite 
Balkum currently being loved and embraced by the massive base of the common Ghanaian, is it any wonder that after the PNDC returned Ghana to constitutional rule, now evolved into the political party of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, Jerry John Rawlings is elected and re-elected for two consecutive terms in office. By December 31st, 2017, as the night is lit with celebration and the sounds and sights of exploding firecrackers, surely it must be difficult not to remember the momentous events of 36 years ago. Surely not by those whose principles hail from the traditions of the revolution, the evolved PNDC and the erstwhile AFRC. Surely we Canadians, more emboldened today than before 1979, should never ever allow ourselves to be made to compromise in silence for those who would exploit us. Nor should we be intimidated by power, education or elitism, nor corrupted through the media, personal gain or by elements of government. But most of all, let us never ever accept in leaders and will be leaders anything less than the highest standard of probity and accountability. What we need to do in this country is to establish a situation where even if it was the devil who should come and sit on top of us in Ghana, by virtue of certain procedures, certain practices, the devil cannot get away with doing whatever he wants. He would necessarily have to do what the people expect of him.